Hello everyone and welcome to Female Empowerment. This is our very first episode and we are so thrilled to announce our very first guest. She is, uh, she or she was, a German ambassador and she also was the very first German ambassador stationed in North Korea. But more about her and her personality later on in the interview. I'm joined with Isidora from Chile. We are crossing the Atlantic. Um, a few words, Isidora. Hello, everybody. Thanks to every people that are joining us this moment. And thanks, Simon, for this amazing guest. Um, I'm so excited for, for hear about their mission at North Korea. So let's go to, 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 to talk and hear to this amazing woman. Diplomat, ambassador, middlewoman between countries on the stage of international politics, your career is quite impressive. However, what you read on the internet is only the tip of the iceberg. Could you tell us a bit more about you and your career as a diplomat? Oh, uh, thank you very much for having me um, on, your, uh, on your program. I feel quite honored. What are you particularly interested in, if I may ask? I, uh, you you uh, you underline my career as a diplomat and my work with the german foreign office however i have been retired now for exactly 10 years so uh, what are you interested in most how did your or what did your career as a diplomat look like yeah i was uh, i must say that i was very lucky um, and I was also quite quite happy in 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 the foreign service. Um, it was, I don't know. Um, there are so there are so many aspects. Um, it's it's not it's not the career. It's not it's not you know being uh, uh, being an ambassador. As I mean, people look at that uh, in a in a sometimes a romanticizing way and say, oh, an ambassador, but. I mean, you are a civil servant, you serve your country, um, but uh, you have the chance to go uh, to foreign countries. Uh, you have a chance to to work towards understanding. I mean, these are big words, peace and understanding. But um, I think that's actually what the world needs. And so, yes, um, I felt it as a big privilege to be able to to be a small uh, to be a small element in in that big effort, so to so to speak. Were there many female diplomats in your time? Quite frankly, no. Um, I don't know how it's uh, how it was in other um, uh, uh, national services in Germany. Uh, in the Foreign Office, there were very few, there were few women. Let's put it like that to give you um, to give you an example. Um, when I entered the service in 1981, my crew uh, consisted of 39 people and only six of those were women. And wow. even then, uh, the, um, uh, 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 the ministry had undertaken special efforts to recruit women. So of 39, only six, I must say, however, that of these six um, uh, uh, um, uh, and, um, uh, they have they have made uh, they have made careers they have made uh, their mark uh, in in the in the office um, as well so uh, I think today um, there are larger numbers um, but uh, I think one problem still persists and that is um, there are relatively fewer women who apply for a job with the uh, with the uh, diplomatic uh, service. I think um, when you look at the demands the service is making upon you, upon your family life, upon your partner. Yeah. Well, perhaps some women are listening to this podcast and they're thinking about entering in the in that area. Who knows? Yeah, I think um, I think it's good, but uh, I must really say the the foreign the foreign office is making has made great efforts, and yes, we there are more women and also women in really high high positions. Um, uh, we have by now, I think, practically all the really uh, uh, high ranking embassies. That's Washington, it's Rome, it's Paris, it's London. 
um, that's the highest rank you you can get as an ambassador. Uh, all of them have had women um, as ambassadors, and at the moment, also our permanent uh, representative in uh, at the United Nations in New York is a woman. So um, I think that uh, those are uh, really very good, uh, uh, very good results of many years of effort in in the ministry. Yes, exactly. Wow, that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. And you were also the first German ambassador in North Korea. Was that a great responsibility for you? Yeah, uh, in Pyongyang. Yes, it was. It was a great responsibility in in a number of ways. First of all, it was my first ambassadorship. Uh, I had never yeah. led an embassy before, and um, I must say this was um, this was an embassy which had to function under very peculiar and very difficult circumstances. At the time I was there um, in the country, there was no electricity, practically nil. Uh, there was also no water. So if we had electricity and if we had clean water in our compound, um, we uh, practically produced it our, um, ourselves. So technically speaking, um, it was it was quite uh, it was quite uh, quite demanding. Um, uh, politically speaking, I must say I was I was lucky because I arrived as the first ambassador of a unified Germany in Pyongyang at a time when there was still an opening of the country. Uh, we were very welcome and uh, we were made to feel uh, welcome. I must really say the colleagues at the North Korean ministries um, whom I met really um, did whatever they could uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to conform uh, to our wishes if, if it was at all possible, I, I must say. Um, and you know, uh, North Korea at that time in 2002 was still in a humanitarian crisis, uh, the European Union and Germany in particular were among the largest donors of humanitarian aid. And so, um, so I mean, this was already a very good basis for us to work on. It allowed us to, to, to travel around in the country a lot. Uh, to see places where other uh, uh, embassy people were not allowed uh, to go, among other things. And I must underline, it was still this feeling that the country was still looking for um, for opening for more contact also with the West. That changed during my stay there. Of course, 2003 was when North Korea began its... Um, program of nuclear arm um, of developing nuclear weapons in earnestness and from then on i would say it went downhill and uh, that um, also applies to the relations between north korea and the european union and and also germany so yes um, re the responsibility was um, um yeah, was there, but I must also say I had um, I had EU colleagues around me. You should know that uh, the, uh, Germany uh, we, it's our embassy uh, building, but we share it with uh, Sweden and with the British uh, embassy. So uh, so we were always we were always together, and um, that was also a very good feeling in such a un really unusual environment um, to to be surrounded by by colleagues and to be able to to discuss on a on a daily matter wow and how uh, have you dealt with pressure uh yeah i i i don't know i mean some people go on long on long walks or, or things like that <laughs> under pressure my my favorite, uh, my favorite ways um, to 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 function under pressure is either listening to Bach, or very loudly to Dire Straits. Um, but uh, but I mean normally talking to talking to colleagues. Um, 
when I was still in the diplomatic service, definitely talking to colleagues and to talk, talking to, to my staff, to, to uh, especially my deputy. Um, and um, on uh, every other circumstance, um, I'm talking, uh, talking to my cats, which usually helps uh, to put things into the right uh, perspective. So <laughs> <laughs> you have two cats, right? I have two cats. I must say from my first posting, which was to Bombay, it was still called Bombay in those days. Um, that was when my first cat joined me. And since then I have always, I've never been, I've never been without. <laughs> so let's put it like that. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, some logistical problems when you are traveling from Bombay, when you're being posted from Bombay to Seoul, And um, and and you have to make sure that uh, that your cat is allowed to come with you. Oh, it's, yes, it's, it has its moments. Yeah, but <laughs> we always managed. I can imagine. Yes, and you earlier told us that you learned French. Uh, how many languages do you speak now? Yeah, also French. Um, I've, I mean, my my major language is English, um, and then I I, I learned. Fr Incidentally, at school I also learned Latin. Um, I shouldn't forget that, but I, I always forget to put it anywhere. But French, yes. Um, I as I said, um, it was horrible, but um, I got the chance while um, at. Uh, at the training school of the of the ministry to 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 work at my French problem is I never really got to use it uh, because I was always in Anglophone or or in Russian speaking uh, country so Russian is uh, really um, comes uh, comes is more fluent uh, for me I, uh, when I look back, I think I was all in all 11 years um, posted in in Russian speaking countries. So uh, so you pick it uh, so you pick it up whether you want to or not. I I learned some Spanish on my own because I just love the the Spanish language. And uh, since my retirement, which is now has now just been 10 years, um, I have started learning Korean. And that is uh, what I'm what I'm uh, doing uh, right right now. I, I love Korean. Um, to me, um, I, I love it. Uh, it doesn't love me back, but um, but somehow um, I think we will manage. I I, I think um, if I were in Seoul today, I could manage to go to a restaurant, order a hotel room, tell the taxi driver where to go. So I mean the basic facts of life. Uh, are okay but and for the rest we will see wow wow amazing that is a lot of languages especially if you have to learn uh, a different alphabet i can imagine yes but at least they all have they all have uh, have an, uh, an alphabet uh, i mean chinese i think would would be beyond me but uh, but uh, this is uh, I, i think it's it's doable yeah Yeah, it's it's. I I like it. Uh, other people have other hobbies, but uh, yes, yours is learning languages. Super admirable, uh, really. Well, sometimes I have to. Uh, sometimes I have to uh, to to sort of re-motivate myself. But <laughs> I have a wonderful teacher, and she motivates me. So that's wow. Uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have a great teacher. Yeah. That's true. Well, now we're going to the part uh, where I'm going to ask you some more informal questions uh, mm. to get to know you and your personality a bit better. Um, so we just get started. Do you prefer coffee or tea? I can't function without coffee in the morning. <laughs> How does your perfect start into the week look like? Well, uh, I thought about that question um, 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 some time ago. Um, I would say perfect day if the cats allow me to sleep until six uh, um, um, uh, and not just until five o'clock in the morning and good news on the news and no outstanding work on my to-do list. I mean, that would be a good start to the week. So which of the languages you speak, you enjoy the most speaking in? 
Uh, well, English. Um, English is really. Um, I'm, I'm sure I have a horrible German accent, but but English, I I read almost exclusively uh, uh, English uh, uh, English books, and yeah, so I so I feel at home in the language. What is your favorite Korean dish? I um, um, yeah, it's called kimchi john. And that is a pancake, um, a pancake where with the which is which is baked with with kimchi. And you may have heard about kimchi, yes, um, which is very hot and spicy. And I just love that kimchi, John. Yep. <laughs> What advice do you have to stay motivated? Mm. Yeah, uh, as I said, I mean, either you need somebody who from time to time motivates you. And encourages you, um, or um, I, my 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 recipe is if if it really doesn't get me anywhere, just give it a day's rest and then start again. And usually that works. That's a good advice. If you have a snack, you prefer sweet or salty? Salty. Salty, yeah. Mm. Which book can you read over and over again? Uh, yeah, uh, well, mm, it's not, I don't know, um, I thought to, t uh, to tell something really intellectual, but to, the truth to tell, uh, that book is The Lord of the Rings, because that is the book I have read over and over again. At times, you know, when I came to the end, to the, when I read the last page, I was so sorry that it had ended that I started right over away. And, you know, it's a very thick um, uh, book. But, yeah, that's it. Those books are classic. Yeah. Um, which traditional habit have you picked up in a country where you worked in an embassy? Uh, uh, yeah, I... I learned that I do not really like to shake hands. I much prefer the way either in India, Namaste, or in Tajikistan, you touch your shoulder, or in Korea, you bow. Um, I I must say I like uh, I like all these uh, manners more than uh, than shaking hands, which was quite uh, was which was quite nice uh, during Corona. No? <laughs> yes. It also is a nice, it feels like a respectful gesture. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Um, What is your favorite movie? Uh, difficult, but I'm not much of a movie uh, goer. But my favorite, when I thought about it, what I had seen, uh, it's when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit. Oh, I really, yes. really love that film. That It's a film based on a book, right? Yes, by Judith Kerr. Yes. And the film is uh, it's it, it's it's a great film. Uh, the the children um, uh, who are acting in that film are so fantastic. Um, um, it really sticks uh, in in my mind. Yeah. Which dish is a must try in South Korea? Uh, to my mind, um, it is samgyetang. That is a chicken stuffed with ginseng roots and then cooked in a broth. And um, that is quite, it's quite special. Uh, I'm not saying you, sh you, sh you have to try kimchi because if you are in Korea, you won't be able to avoid it anyway. So it will be on your dish sooner or later. No? Yes. And it's, it's quite good. But it's an, it uh, I would say it's an acquired taste rather than something you are, you feel um, uh, immediately drawn to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here and uh, have a listen to your life, your career as a diplomat. I'm sure our listeners have learned a lot and thank you for taking the time. Well, again, thanks for having me. I don't know uh, if I could share any really profound ideas about how to save the world with you, but I hope you listen. Uh, uh, um, uh, but I hope that uh, it will be okay for your listeners. Anyway, thank you sure. very much indeed. I'm sure of it. Thank you.